So I think you guys all know how I personally feel about Mayor Pete. I am not a fan. I don't think he's the worst candidate ever, but for the most part, I think he's just another centrist neoliberal who's trying to convince Democratic Party primary voters that he's more progressive than he actually is. However, whenever I criticize Pete Buttigieg, it's always based on policy substance. If I disagree with him, it's specifically because he either supports or does not support a policy I want him to support. However, Republicans seemingly believe he is a huge threat, and as a result, they have targeted him lately. Now, because Republicans have zero policy substance whatsoever, they can't actually lob a thoughtful criticism at Pete Buttigieg. So instead, how are they choosing to uh, criticize him and try to bring him down? Like this. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the good news is the condition of my soul is in the hands of God, but the Iowa caucuses are up to you. Yeah. I mean, I think that Pete handled that really well. I would probably be a lot more rude to that idiot. And, you know, it's not just this one heckler who's a standout. There are other Republicans who are relatively prominent in the realm of politics who are using the same homophobic line of attack against Pete Buttigieg. For example, Franklin Graham vocalized his disgust with the fact that the first prominent gay presidential candidate uh, exists. He tweeted out, Mayor Buttigieg says he's a gay Christian. As a Christian, I believe the Bible, which defines homosexuality as sin, something to be repentant of, not something to be flaunted, praised, or politicized. The Bible says marriage is between a man and a woman, not two men, not two women. Oh, okay, well, thank you so much, Franklin. I'm sure that that's the first time Pete has heard that before. But since you told him that the Bible says marriage is between a man and a woman, not a man and a man or a woman and a woman, that's totally going to change his mind now. He's never heard that before, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, these people are so fucking stupid. They're so stupid. Because you have this superstitious, morally bankrupt holy book that you abide by, you believe that we should all acquiesce and follow your beliefs. But we reject your religion. I don't accept your religion. I don't subscribe to the holy book that you follow. I'm an atheist. But if you actually want to live in a country where the government imposes its homophobic views on its citizens, there's no shortage of countries you can move to. You can go to Saudi Arabia, Franklin Graham, where they have the same views as you have about homosexuality, and they kill people for being gay. So if you don't like that gay people exist, and they're now running for president, and they're fighting for equality, move to Saudi Arabia. So do you understand, like, you would think that we've reached this state in America where, you know, somebody can run for president who's gay, and we don't really focus on that. We focus on the policy substance, but people are still very homophobic. You could have asked any gay person, they, they would have still told you that, but it's a little bit disheartening to see that homophobia is still flaunted in such an open way. It's a little bit soul-crushing, you know? I'm not gonna lie about that. Now, on top of the brazen homophobia and bigotry that Pete Buttigieg is putting up with, well, there's another line of attack that Republicans are using, not necessarily the Republican Party, but individuals who are pro-Republican, people in the realm of politics, and I'm talking about Jacob Wool, who is perhaps the GOP's most notorious and dumbest smear merchant, who not only attempted to lob false sexual assault allegations against Robert Mueller, but he also faked death threats against himself, and he's now turned his attention to Mayor Pete. And what is he doing? Well, he's trying to fabricate false sexual assault allegations against Pete Buttigieg. I mean, how disgusting and morally reprehensible of a person do you have to be to make up this claim of sexual assault, which you know could ruin someone's life, but you don't like them, so fuck them. 
And this all kind of started when on Monday there was this Medium post that mysteriously appeared where somebody claims that Mayor Pete Buttigieg had sexually assaulted them. Now, I saw this and my bullshit detector went off immediately because anytime you see something like this that isn't vetted by a real journalist that just seemingly appears out of nowhere by this new account, the red flags in your mind should be going off. So I think most people smelled the bullshit here from a mile away. And what was later revealed by the Daily Beast, who managed to uncover what was going on, was that this was all part of a larger coordinated effort to smear Pete Buttigieg in the most disgusting way imaginable. So as the Daily Beast's Lachlan Marquet, Kevin Polson, and Noah Schottman explains, a pair of right-wing provocateurs are being accused of attempting to recruit young Republican men to level false allegations of sexual assault against Democratic presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg. The details of the operative's attempt emerged as one man suddenly surfaced with a vague and uncooperated allegation that Buttigieg had assaulted him. The claim was retracted hours later. A Republican source told the Daily Beast that lobbyist Jack Berkman and internet troll Jacob Wohl approached him last week to try to convince him to falsely accuse Buttigieg, the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, of engaging him sexually while he was too drunk to consent. The source, who spoke to the Daily Beast, said Berkman and Wohl made clear that their goal was to kneecap Buttigieg's momentum in the 2020 presidential race. The men asked to remain anonymous out of a concern that the resulting publicity might imperil his employment and because he said Wohl and Berkman have a reputation for vindictiveness. But the source provided the Daily Beast with a surreptitious audio recording of a meeting which corroborates his account. In it, Wohl appears to refer to Buttigieg as a term threat to President Trump's re-election next year. On Monday, a separate individual using the name of Hunter Kelly published a post on the site Medium in which he alleged that Buttigieg sexually assaulted him in February. That post was tweeted out by David Wohl, Jacob's father, and quickly rewritten by the site Big League Politics, which is known as a landing ground for right-wing conspiracy theories. Kelly's supposed Medium and Twitter accounts both say they were created this month. His Facebook page included several posts lauding Trump and criticizing Hillary Clinton. He appears to have responded to Jacob Wohl's posts on Instagram in the past. The Daily Beast reached out to Kelly on a cell phone listed to him in the student directory at his Michigan college, told we were reporting on apparent efforts by Jacob Wohl and Jack Berkman to drum up false sexual assault allegations against Buttigieg. Kelly replied, I was unaware this was happening, but yes, it is true. Kelly wrote that he did not control the newly created Medium and Twitter accounts that posted the allegations under his name. When asked if he could verify his identity, he texted the Daily Beast to selfie that matched the photo seen on Medium and on Kelly's long-standing Facebook accounts. Here is a selfie of me. Sorry, I have been crying, he wrote. Today and the promises made didn't go as planned. Kelly declined to provide more details, but two hours later, he posted a message on his Facebook timeline headed, I was not sexually assaulted. So the guy who originally made that Medium post accusing Pete Buttigieg of sexually assaulting him claimed that that wasn't actually him who wrote it and... It was this gigantic debacle, and it's another fabricated sexual assault case that blew up in Jacob Wall's face. And this isn't the first time he's just fabricated stories out of thin air, because him and one of his colleagues, Laura Loomer, is relentlessly pushing this story that is not corroborated by anyone about how Ilhan Omar came to America by marrying her brother. So this guy is nothing more than a notorious smear merchant, and he needs to be prosecuted for this. Like, these are claims that he's leveling against people that can ruin their lives. This can ruin their lives. And the GOP, if you'll recall, they were screeching at the top of their lungs back in November when we were vetting serious allegations against then Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Well, as you can see here, if they're false, they often don't pan out. And the people who are creating these false allegations are often discovered. But for Republicans to come out and be so worried about false allegations, are they going to condemn Jacob Wall here? And it wasn't just big league politics 
who um, reported on this. There were other right-wing websites that did the same. Infowars, unsurprisingly, picked up the Medium post. So, I mean, think about this. Think about how bad this is and how this is journalistic malpractice to just report on a Medium post that hasn't been vetted, hasn't been corroborated by any witnesses. This is horrible, yellow journalism, and any outlet that reports on something like this should absolutely be permanently discredited because evidence is important. But as we can see here, um, this is what the... Uh, first gay presidential candidate has to deal with um homophobia brazen homophobia and false claims of sexual assault it is disgusting absolutely disgusting now to be fair i don't think you know just because pete Buttigieg is gay that jacob wall decided to fabricate this sexual assault claim against him i think he'd probably do this to anyone who he thought posed a threat against donald trump but with that being said, you know, it makes these claims a little bit easier to be believed because what are some of the stereotypes about gay men? They're overly promiscuous. They're always sleeping around. And it doesn't matter that Pete Buttigieg is a married gay man. You know, this is believable because our society believes, you know, these default homophobic narratives that a gay man is perfectly capable of um, not only cheating on his husband, but sexually assaulting someone. Because they're all just a bunch of horn dogs, you know, going around and screwing anything with legs. It is morally reprehensible. Um, so, I mean, if you're going to criticize Pete Buttigieg, then you can do so by not completely impugning his character in the most disgusting fucking way possible. So this is absolutely disgusting. And I, I, I'm honestly speechless. I mean, it's not surprising, but it's really, it's still grotesque. And it really is jarring to see how dirty Republicans are willing to get. Now, again, this isn't necessarily the GOP itself, but it is a smear merchant who does propaganda for the GOP and is willing to do anything, go to any length to defeat anyone deemed a threat to the Holy One, Donald Trump. So here's the note that I'll end on. It's time for Jacob Wool to be prosecuted because these false accusations these are crimes so prosecute him and throw his ass in jail if he's going to keep doing this because it's not like this is the first time he was caught doing this like this is a criminal who is lobbing very serious accusations against political opponents of his that could ruin their lives and there needs to be some accountability so he should be investigated and ultimately he should be prosecuted because this is completely unacceptable. I wouldn't support this against Donald Trump if there were false allegations. I would just challenge someone based on the policy substance. And if you can't defeat that person based on the substance itself, then too bad. That's politics. Try again. But to stoop to this level, you know, this is gutter politics and it's grotesque.